Well, good evening. I am uh, Spencer Thorpe. I serve here as an elder, and I had the privilege of serving as a youth pastor uh, here under the one we are celebrating uh, tonight, Mr. Slusher and Mrs. Slusher. Um, anyway, Pete, if you could have a seat. Nothing, just. <laughs> yeah, not till midnight, right? Uh, if you came uh, from out of town tonight, I know we have some in the front. Would you stand? If you came from out of town, so we could recognize those that came from. Go ahead and stand. Stand up. If you came from out of town. So tonight when we do the roast of Pete Slusher, we're, the celebration of Pete Slusher, we're going to be uh, celebrating uh, kind of the, the milestones of his ministry, starting with Richland, and then we're going to move to uh, Southern California, and then we're going to finish uh, with CBC. Um, so we're really excited about that. And if you would, would you uh, pray with me uh, before we begin? Uh, Lord, thanks so much uh, for ministry here at CBC and uh, allowing the slushers to just be so influential in all of our lives, Lord. And as we plan for uh, this day, Lord, I, I know some of us were thinking of Romans 12 as talks about outdoing one another and showing honor. And Lord, I know how often Pete and Kathy have outdone it in showing us honor, opening up their house, sharing their lives, going above and beyond, being at the hospital room, showing up to fix sprinklers, whatever it may be, God, they outdid it and showing honor to us. So I just pray for just a brief moment that we'd be able to outdo them in showing them honor, Lord. And we, God, we thank you so much that they're here doing ministry because of what you did for us on the cross, Lord. So we may not lose sight of your faithful servant that belongs to you, Lord. And you're the reason for all this praise. So we give that to you tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So um, right now, I'm going to have our first group of people come on up and start to make their way to the stage. But you are going to get to play a quick little game with me. You may wonder to yourself, you know, there's some nice cupcakes and there's some uh, you know, treats on our table, but why is there an A on our table and why is there a B on our table? Raise your hand if you're one of those people that was really, no, just a couple of you. Nope, yeah, quite a few of you. Yeah, I know. Why is there an A and a B? Because we're going to play a game show called How Well Do You Know Pete and Kathy Slusher? So what you're going to do is you're going to find, now, your table should have eight people at it, okay? So kind of look at your table, see who's at your table, and you're going to pick a team captain, you're going to pick a team captain, okay, at your table, a team captain. All right, you have your team captain. This is taking way too long, team captains. Okay, and your team captains are going to wield... The A and the B cards, okay? And so what we're going to do is how well do you know Pete and Kathy? Now, very important. When I ask a question, you're not going to throw it up right away because I know so many of you in this room are cheaters and you're going to look to the front to know who's smart and knows Pete and Kathy the best and then you'll change your answer. So we're going to throw them all up in the air on three. So if the answer is A, you're going to hold up A, B, B, but wait until I say go. Does that make sense? Okay, everyone understand. Let's start off with... Let's start off with an easy one, unless you're from out of town, okay? He would rather have a lunch meeting at A, In-N-Out, or B, Mazatlan. May it rest in peace. <laughs> Did you not listen to me? Put your cards down. Put your cards down. And on three, we'll raise them. Okay, one, two, three. Oh... Oh, you can't change them. And the correct answer is, that's an easy one. That's an easy one. B, Mazatlan. Mazatlan. Okay, very good, very good. So if you got that correct, give yourself a point. Okay, question number two. Okay, question number two. Pete and Kathy, Pete and Kathy would rather A, save money in tent camp or... B, stay at a hotel. Oh, hey, whoa, 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 whoa. On three, on three. Yeah. <laughs> on three. One, two, three. Oh. 
<laughs> oh. Okay, if you got B, you are correct. Okay, question number three. Don't put it up right away. Don't put it up right away, okay? Who has gotten more speeding tickets? Pete A or B, Kathy? Pete A or B, Kathy? Okay. One, two, three. And what is the answer, Kathy? Pete. Oh, I got Pete. Okay. Okay, last question for this round. Last question for this round. True or false? True is A, false is B. Pete and Kathy have watched more than five Hallmark movies in the last year together. True or false? They've watched more than five Hallmark movies. A or B? One. A is true, thank you. A is true. B is false. Thank you for the clarification. Thank you. One, two, three. Wow. I don't think we have. False is the answer. False. Give yourselves a point. Give yourselves a point. <laughs> if you've watched one, you've watched them all. Yes, good, good line. That was Kevin. <laughs> okay, and so we would like to begin our, our time together uh, with the Richland group uh, up in Washington. Okay, so Mike and Mary Roberts, I'll let Mike uh, kind of introduce himself and the rest here, and we're going to hear a little bit of their ministry. <laughs> All right, good evening. My name is Mike Roberts. This is my wife, Mary Ann, and our good friend, Paul Dean. We all have the distinct privilege of uh, being in the early years of Pete and Kathy Slusher's ministry. So was it, was it 1981? I want to ask. I think, that, I think I had it right. 1981, the Slushers moved to Richland, Washington. I was, uh, I was going into my freshman year of high school, uh, my wife was uh, still not at the church at that point. She came a few years later. And uh, Paul, were you there when they arrived? Or did you guys, you guys kind of came maybe a few years into their ministry as well? Yeah. So I got to kind of see the, the beginning years of the ministry. Kind of Marianne was more maybe the middle. You were a little toward the I final the, years. I was the prime years, really. Yeah, I you. Was the prime years. Yeah, prime, prime, prime years, yes. Um, and, and here's the thing, I, I think it would be helpful to you all to kind of hear um, a little bit about those early years of ministry. Uh, one of the things that um, we quickly realized with Pete is that Pete and pranks went very, very well together. And so I just thought, guys, it might be kind of fun just to talk a little bit about some of the pranks, and I'll, I'll maybe lead out and you guys can fill in, but... Um, one of the things that um, we knew that Pete loved was uh, his Fords. And, uh, and so um, we also knew that one of the things that Pete loved was, um, was to leave his house at the last possible second and drive as fast as he could to get to church on time. <laughs> and so um, I thought it would be a really excellent idea to take a padlock and put it around there was a, a spot on his Ford Escort wheel where I could lock a padlock onto his wheel and I was I was in high school y'all I was in high school I didn't I didn't know anything more I just wanted to I just wanted to make a racket what I didn't realize is that if Pete accelerated that Escort more than say 30 miles an hour, the whole car probably would have completely fallen apart from the, from the convulsion the car would go into. And so he was incredibly late to Sunday school that Sunday morning and incredibly irritated. <laughs> and I refused to acknowledge that I was the one 
<laughs> who did that. I think, I think it, he didn't know for at least a month. I mean, I, there was no way in his state of agitation I was going to confess to that particular sin. But um, that was uh, one of many, many pranks that I was involved in. I don't know, how about, how about you guys? I would say our era was very into toilet papering. And I would say one of the greatest joys of toilet papering was how much he loved it. Because he would always be like, hey, I got loved this weekend. Um, but uh, one of my favorite stories was we TP'd their house while they were gone, and it was on, on the front page of the local newspaper. So that was really exciting. Or the time that Pete chased us um, through the wood, through the, not the woods, but through the desert in um, Tri City. So TPing was a huge part of our ministry to Pete and Cappy. Yes, it was. And we always felt more loved by doing it, so it just inspired us to do more. Um, another story is Pete and Kathy spent a ton of time at our home and us, our family, in their home. But um, one of my favorite pranks was Pete decided he was going to fill a five-gallon bucket with water and dump it on my sister. Um, and my sister is a quiet, I would say she's kind of quiet and um, a worrywart kind of a person. And she secretly, unbeknownst to all of us, went upstairs onto the second story floor of our home and filled up that five gallon bucket, which Pete just left sitting right there for anybody to grab. And she poured the entire bucket of water on his head as he's conversing and slowly backing up, just getting closer to the house, right within target range. So we always, we had a lot of fun with pranks with Pete and Kathy. So mostly Pete, but Kathy got to enjoy the benefits of toilet papering. I was told that I need to keep it at PG-13, so I need to just self-censoring many of the pranks uh, that went on. But it was, the pranks was what drew me into the youth group because I was, I was part of a regular Baptist church and it just wasn't that exciting on Sunday morning. <laughs> and so I was looking forward to youth group because all of this unsafe, uninsurable, <laughs> slightly and sometimes most certainly illegal activity that, that drew every, all of the males into youth group. And here's the problem. Completely fake news false advertising. This was, this was Pete's way of drawing young men into youth group. So I'm, when, I'm, when I'm growing up, I'm actually, I'm looking forward to getting involved. I'm looking forward to maybe taking part in duct taping someone to a tree and leaving them overnight. <laughs> Happened at least three times. Um, and, and what happens is I, my first foray into the youth group, I go to church camp and I get the privilege of being in Pete's Flesher's cabin. So freshmen, I'm just thinking about pranks, and uh, the first night, we talk about what girl we like at camp that week. It's super, I'm excited about it. I'm like, man, this is exactly, this is the type of stuff I'm, I'm excited about. And someone below me says, I really like so-and-so. And I liked her too, but I, in my moment of bravado, I'm like, oh, she's She's ugly. She's a dog. <laughs> this is what Pete does. He walks over to my bunk. He puts his finger right in my face and he says, Paul, you never call a sister in Christ a dog. I'm completely humiliated by my, by my peers and I avoid Pete for the next two years. Because <laughs> you go in expecting excitement and pranks and duct taping people to a tree, and you get you get blunt confrontation. <laughs> and then then he pursues you. Then he comes to your football games, and he comes over to your house, and he goes through your your music library. Shallow, shallow, <laughs> Satan. Fornication. <laughs> Get rid of all of it. You're wasting your life, Paul. <laughs> I wanted pranks and fun. 
But then the next summer, I went to, to camp and gave my life to Jesus. And uh, it turns out the pranks weren't that important. And, uh, and maybe the thing I get to do is just come around at his retirement party and, and tell everybody about him. But we did get him back, and, and Marianne uh, hinted at it. There was an intense competition year after year. Who can use the most toilet paper on Pete's house? And Pete would, why would you leave? Um, every time he left, it's like, Pete's gone. <laughs> and so Eater, Chad Eater, raise your hand, Chad, goes to Costco. So the year before, the year before, they, uh, they had, I think it was like 190 rolls. And they're like, that'll never be broken. And Eater's like, hold my, no, no. We... <laughs> Eater's like, I'm going to Costco. So he has the Costco in his truck, and we just, we call all, we muster the Rohirrim, and everybody comes in, and my brother climbs up to it so high in the tree that we've got to huck the, the, the toilet paper at him, and he's up there for two hours. And we drove by the house a year later, and it was still up there. <laughs> you couldn't see the house. And it, and it gets dark, and, and the neighbors are over there with video cameras. The police are coming by. What's going on? Oh, it's Slusher's house. No problem. <laughs> Keep going. Eater, it, 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 it gets dark, and Chad has, you know, one of those, those trucks that have the lights on the top, and Chad says, oh, man, I can finally use these for something. And he flips them on, and we toilet paper for another couple hours. But we... We piled all of the toilet paper rolls. There were so many they could they were falling off of the porch. And uh, and then as Marianne hinted, the Tri City Herald heard about it. Full color, front page, top of the fold, pastor's return brings paperwork. <laughs> Great. The the only thing I'll add to it is that of course, you know, you know, church life, someone writes them an angry letter and says, you know, there's kids starving. Or there's apparently kids that don't have toilet paper somewhere in the world. <laughs> and we're wasting it. But, but the great thing was, I don't know if this is true, but, um, but Pete, Pete loved it. I don't know how Kathy felt about it. I don't know how Mike felt about it. But the word on the street was that Katie was mad. <laughs> Katie's like, why are these people doing that? And, you know, Pete's like, don't worry about it. Next youth group activity, you know, Wednesday. We're going over to my house. <laughs> we cleaned it up, but it was. <laughs> so uh, one of the things that uh, we all loved about Pete, um, and, and it usually didn't happen if Kathy was there, um, but Pete loved to give us just enough rope that we would hang ourselves. Um, <laughs> And I think we, we, I don't know, maybe we all have a moment like that. I know Marianne has a really good one that occurred over in, like, Bellevue, Washington. Um, why, don't you, why don't you tell them a little bit about that? Okay, I will tell that story. Um, it is very true. Whenever Kathy wasn't there, it was always, like, something terrifying happened or <laughs> something unsafe happened. <laughs> um, so we were at, we were going over to the Seattle area for something. I really don't even know. I know there was a Mariners game. That's about it. But um, we, were, we always stayed at this church in Bellevue. Um, and the girls were all getting ready in the morning. And me and my friend Stephanie were not ready. And Pete's like, oh, it's all right. You guys can just meet us at McDonald's. We're like, all right, no problem. He's like, it's just a short little walk. So the whole youth group leaves except for Stephanie and I, and we decide we're walking, okay, we're walking to McDonald's. We have no clue where McDonald's is, and this is like in the city. So we start walking. We ask this homeless guy on the side of the street, where is McDonald's? He's like, oh, just go down this road here. So we walk down this road, and like, I think we were missing for at least an hour and a half, possibly two hours, um, and we get to the bottom of this hill, and we're like, we see another homeless person. We're like, hey, where's the McDonald's? They're like, oh, it's way down this road here or way up that road there. Just go under the freeway here. And at that point, I was my friend, Stephanie, was like, uh, let's just go ahead and go under the freeway and then go back up the other side. And I was like, no, let's just go back the same way we went. And on our way back up the hill, Pete showed up in the van. But 
I was dating my wonderful husband at that point, who was probably more upset with me than Pete ever was. <laughs> but I learned that when it was time to be ready, you were ready. But I still say to this day, if Kathy had been there, they never would have left us. <laughs> I don't have anything to add. It just, everything was so... Pete, Pete told me years later, he said, I can't do any of the activities we did in Richland. Because every time we do an activity, it would be, there'd be a committee meeting later, and like, we know one thing, we're never doing that again. <laughs> we had an underground church rally that we had at least two car accidents, and the, Pete did, er, and the police detained one of the, uh, one of the sponsors. So, <laughs> there was a lot of irresponsible things going on. Yeah. We had this. We had this wonderful. Uh, we had this wonderful place that we used to go call it to called Concanoli. Has, has anyone ever heard of Concanoli, Washington? It was in the middle of nowhere. Um, it, there was a lake. There was a cabin that uh, somebody in the church owned this this lake cabin. And uh, but there wasn't enough room for boys and girls, so it was it was a boys' weekend, and all the guys would load up in the church van, and Pete would drive. Um, very safely um, up up to Concanoli, and um, so you know we were having a good time, and and uh, I'm an I'm a morning person, and uh, really enjoy um, you know serving others, and and so I told Pete I said Pete can I make can I make everybody breakfast, and Pete's like yeah sure go ahead you know I'll, I'll make pancakes, so I go into the kitchen and. Um, and there's a stove in there that I've never seen before. Um, it, it had all these knobs on the front, and it appeared to be gas, but I wasn't really sure. But I thought, oh, I can figure this out. And so you know, I turned one knob, and nothing really happened. And so I turned another knob, and then I realized, oh, I probably need something to light this thing. And so, so uh, you know, I went out to try to find a lighter, and that was when that alerted to kind of know that something was very, very wrong in the kitchen. So he went in to see what was going on. He realized that I had turned the knob on for the oven, and there had been gas building up in the oven. And uh, so he uh, turned the knob off, opened the door of the oven to kind of let the gas out, and he waited what seemed like an appropriate amount of time for the natural gas to kind of evacuate. And then he decided just to make sure that it was all gone, he would go ahead and light, uh, you know? <laughs> and so he lit and the largest ball of flame and fire came out of the mouth of the stove. It burned all of the hair off of Pete's arm. Like his, his arm was like, just completely charred, like all the hair is gone, his eyebrows are gone, um, and the ball of fire pushed me back all the way across the kitchen and kind of threw me up against the refrigerator, and it made a huge concussive sound that, um, you know, alerted all the neighbors, and it, it, it was, it was, it was great being in Pastor Pete's youth group. We, we, I've never had so much fun in my entire life. It was, it was, it was great. So one of the reasons why uh, we are up here is uh, because um, we all are serving um, full time in ministry. Uh, my, my wife and I um, have been in ministry for almost 30 years now. Um, and currently we're in Southern California. Um, and honestly, the reason, why, the reason why we ended up there is because of, of your example. And um, all I can tell you both is thank you. I, I think of uh, 1 Corinthians uh, 15, 58. Be steadfast, immovable always abounding in the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. And um, it has been a privilege to sit under your ministry, 
but also to be encouraged in ministry um, for all these years. And uh, we, we're so happy to be here to celebrate you guys tonight. So. Since I said all those scandalous things, maybe I'll just finish by, by saying that Pete has been a giver my entire relationship with him. I called him up one day and said, Pete, I need a car. He gave me his car. When it came time, uh, when I met a, a woman, asked her to marry me, uh, there was only one person I wanted to do our wedding. And he flew out to Ohio to do the wedding. When my daughters have been uh, shipwrecked or, uh, or on the side of the road in their car on the way to California, I call Pete. And he says, no problem, takes care of him. Uh, he has just been that for me my entire, really since, since we met. And, uh, but, but most of all, I think the giving part is that there's nobody in my life to this day who is more of a spiritual mentor to me than Pete. And, uh, and the reason I'm in ministry today is because of him and because of his courage to look me in the eye and tell me when I was doing right and I should be applauded uh, and, and honestly more often when I needed to be corrected. Uh, but in, a, in an absolute critical time in my life, he showed me that God had not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. And to that, for that, I, will, I am eternally grateful. Love you, Pete. And as the guys have talked so much about Pete, Pete has been an incredible example in my life as well. But Kathy has also been an incredible example of what it means to come alongside your pastor husband. And um, it's just been a blessing to walk through ministry, um, knowing that you could call Kathy, knowing that you could share your heart with Kathy, and be encouraged to keep going. So I just am grateful also for Kathy being a great example to all of us as young girls and now as a wife and a mom myself. So thank you, Kathy. So uh, just real quick, Chad, is the record 190 rolls? Two, 250. Okay. And you guys are headed out of town May 6th. I'm just... No, 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 no. Don't do that, but... Eddie and Elizabeth are out of town, so teenagers. <laughs> you know. Well, we, we represented Richland, and from the bustling metropolis of Richland, Pete and Kathy decided for the quiet life in uh, L.A. County, California. Uh, but that was just five years, right? So from 1992 to 90, 1991 to 1996. That's where I met Pete. I would echo many of the things that these guys have already said about him in terms of ministry influence and things like that. Um, but we thought, uh, and in many ways, I think for you guys, I hope I'm not saying this out of turn, uh, but uh, Southern California was an opportunity to prepare you for CBC uh, and to know that God was calling you here. Um, but the influence didn't stop me. And then we're going to have a, a video right now a guy that Pete and I worked with in Southern California. He's a pastor in Fresno, couldn't be here, uh, but Chips Ross. So we're going to play that video right now. Hello, Pastor Pete. Thank you so much for 30 years of ministry and your commitment to God and to his word. I think one of my first memories of you is uh, what I call the Pete Slasher strut walk. Not that's how you normally walk, but uh, when you were describing to us someone who is proud, someone who is arrogant, uh, someone who was too, too much thinking about themselves, uh, they kind of like have this walk, and you'd have like the leather jacket, you know, imagine for us. And I remember one time you were talking about how uh, 
uh, the guy and his gal, they were both in love with the same person. Uh, she was in love with him, and he was in love with himself. Uh, so thank you for that. Uh, another memory is of your wallet. And you opened up your wallet one time, and you showed that it was absolutely empty. There was no money in it, and you, you only get money because your wife puts money into it. And, and for me, as a son of an accountant and a guy who could figure out any financial problem relatively easily, uh, I have this feeling of pressure. How am I going to be like my dad? I don't love math and understand math like my dad. And, and so when you did that, I know that wasn't the point, but it really gave me a freedom that I can be a godly man and I don't have to be exactly like my dad. I don't have to figure out all the financial problems. And uh, if I were to show you my wallet, it does have cash and stuff in it. So I'm not exactly like you there, Pastor Pete. A third memory is with Dan Luna. And uh, I was talking to him and I was going to say, you know what, I'll be praying for you as he was going to enlist in the Navy. And, and you were walking by, you weren't really part of the conversation, but you grabbed me and you grabbed him and you said, hey, why don't we pray right now? And so there in the middle of the, the gym foyer there at Santa Cruz Baptist, you led us in prayer. People walking all around. And that was the first time for me. And that was a very vivid object lesson. So I, I keep that in mind. And I, I pray with people in the moment. Um, and I think the last memory I have is, is the most significant. We were, it was an evening time at Santa Cruz Baptist. We were in the front parking lot. And I remember it being a red pickup truck. I don't know whose it was. We were sitting in the back of this red pickup truck, and we were just talking as, as men. And you were sharing your heart for the Lord. And it was at that moment that I knew I wanted to be part of your youth ministry. Not because necessarily there was fun and games or pretty girls or whatever it was. It was that you loved Jesus, and you had a passion for Jesus, and I wanted that too. So uh, congratulations on 30 years. Um, thank you for hitting leadoff for me in being the one to, to set the table for me to start my 30 years of serving the Lord and, and hopefully to also have a passion for the Lord throughout my ministry. Thank you so much. We're going to continue to move things along with our How Well Do You Know Pete and Kathy game. So team captains, grab your cards. Grab your cards. It's time for one more round. So we're going to begin with a little dating question. Everyone go, ooh. Don't chicken out. Okay, here we go. So who was interested in who first? Was it P was interested in Kathy first, A? Don't put it on yet. Don't put them up yet. Or was Kathy interested in P first, B? Okay, on three. We're going to do it on three. What? No, you have to pick A or B. Oh, A was P, B was Kathy. Okay, one, two, three. A, 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 21 months. Oh, there's some discussion. Okay, you ready? One, two, three. What was the answer, Kathy? Eight months. Eight months. Okay. Last question. Who does Pete text the most? A, Kathy, or B, Mike Slusher? <laughs> Who does Pete text the most? A, Kathy, or B, Mike Slusher? One, two, three! Oh. <laughs> Kathy checks the cell phone bill. Here we go. It was a very slim margin that I won. Oh. Okay. Any score, if you're here, come on up. We're going to now transition to the CBC era. Um, and then shortly after that, we're going to finish uh, with Don Thayer giving us some closing words. So I'd like to introduce uh, Dale and Annie. All right. Um, for the record, had I not listen to Pete and become a pastor, I could have retired last year. 
For those of you who know what it means, tier one purse. So we're going to turn this... <laughs> we're now going to roll into a roast of Pete and Kathy's. No. That is not what we're going to do. Um, interestingly enough, I am 54 years old, and this is Pete and Kathy's 27th anniversary. So they have been here as pastors half of my life, which is interesting. So, are you clapping because I'm old? Um, I started coming here in 1985, and we were a, a, a not a very large church and mostly uh, older people. And I was um, kind of in charge of the junior high program, which was a grand total of about six kids. Um, I had followed my father-in-law in the ministry, who had had maybe 12 kids in the senior high ministry. So we kind of ran the youth program, and then we were interviewing for a new senior pastor, and Pete came, and he said, if you hire me in a year, you will commit to hiring a youth pastor, or don't hire me. And I went, he's done. <laughs> and lo and behold, they hired him, and him and Kathy came, and within a year, we were growing. We hired Don, and Susan came on board, so he was a man of his word. We continued to grow, and Pete asked me, he called me into his office one night after youth group, and he said, hey, I want you to quit teaching and become our new youth pastor as things moved along. My wife and I prayed about it, and we came here. And this, the reason I'm talking about me is because I knew nothing about being a pastor. Much of what I got to know, I got to know from Pete. So here is what I learned from Pete, and most of you won't struggle with this because I think you see it every day. The word family is more than just a word. You're committed. We are here together, and we will get through this together. We will get in each other's face when we need to get in each other's face. We will laugh together. We will cry together, and we will celebrate together. Amen? That means something to Pete. I have seen Pete um, go to people's house in the face of tragedy on his anniversary. Story after story of story like that um, comes true. When I transitioned to this position, one of the struggles that Pete had, and I'll tell you the secret right now because most of you don't know it, he has to prepare a sermon every week, but it's difficult when people have free access to his office to prepare a sermon. So he said, you need to find a way to kind of be a gatekeeper to keep people from getting into my office. And I said, do you want to be that kind of a church, Pete? Because I can do that. Where you'll be over there preparing your sermon, then you get to see people once in a while. And the answer was, no, I don't want to be that kind of a church. I want to be the pastor where people can come into my office and talk to me anytime they want. And he did. That's what he held to. One of the things he challenged us as an entire church, but specifically as elders, he said, stop saying you'll pray for people and start praying with people. When someone approaches you and said, hey, would you pray for me about this? Stop what you're doing and pray with them. Amen? Why do we do that? Because we're, we're family. That was a value he, he, ingra he ingrained in us. He said, if you're going to invest, this is one of the lessons he taught me. If you're going to invest in anything, Dale, invest in people. Take chances on people. Guess what? Sometimes you'll be wrong. Sometimes you'll look like a moron. Sometimes everybody will tell you, you made a great big mistake. You should never have gambled on that person. But guess what you do next time? Take a chance. Gamble on people. Why do we do that? We're family. See? This investment in people has led me to do a lot of things, and I'm going to try not to get emo emotional at this part. My biggest regret about tonight, Pete, is your dad couldn't see it. Because if he could say one thing, he would look at you and say, I'm proud of you, Petey. Amen. <laughs> and uh, I've known Pete and Kathy about 14 now. Um, and I, there are so many things I could say, but I just wrote down some of my favorite things about them and um, some memories. Um, the first thing is that they are authentic and knowable. And uh, what I'm about to say is going to sound mean at first, but it's not. So stick with me. <laughs> I've been to churches where the pastor seems more perfect than Pete, quite honestly. <laughs> you know, like, but they didn't know my name. And I didn't know anything of them except for what they told me from the pulpit. And um, it's an honor to really get to know you, and I'm um, grateful that you lived your life open to all of us. Um, I feel like he's more than just a good teacher, he's also a good shepherd, 
And uh, I don't feel like you can be a good shepherd from a pedestal. And um, so I appreciate you being down with the sheep. Um, we have not always agreed. Uh, we've ended some conversations with, I love you, you're wrong. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and that's okay, because um, we still do love each other. And uh, he came around. Uh, <laughs> um, not long ago, I talked to Pete about a little issue in my marriage. I'm sure you guys don't have those. And uh, he didn't solve it for me. Actually, what he did is told me an issue in his. And it was such an encouragement to me because um, sometimes it just feels like you're the only one struggling. And it's real good to know that you're not alone. And I feel like what he pointed me to is like, we're not perfect, and we're just going to keep growing and keep working at it. Um, oh, man, I got nervous all of a sudden. Uh, they also have made an effort to know me and love me as I am. Uh, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but Kathy and I are really different um, <laughs> from each other. And there is, I'm just the person that, like, sometimes during worship, I'm going to get real emotional and worked up. I've got to cry probably once a day. And... <laughs> And one time I really, like, I was crying during worship, and it was to the point that I needed to step out and kind of clean up. And she was in the hall, and she looked at me really concerned, and she was like, what's wrong? And I was like, oh, nothing. I'm just, you know, having feelings. And there was, like, a split second of, like, what? On her face. <laughs> and then she pulled it back together, and she was like, okay, love you. <laughs> loved me how I was. That's just how I am. Um, they've also loved each one of my kids and gotten to know each one of my kids. Um, they've said some hard things to me, um, but because they know me and love me, I can accept those hard things, and they've accepted some hard things that I've said to them, too. Um, and sometimes those were things that needed said, and other times they've been mistakes, and there's been forgiveness, and and that's been really a beautiful thing. And then to say they're hospitable would be like an understatement. I don't know if there's a stronger word for hospitable. Um, but those times with the young married group were really just um, foundational um, for so many of us. It was such a blessing to go and sit and be served coffee and food and be loved on and have Uncle Pete and Aunt Kathy be there to love on our kids and to love on us. And um, I really feel like it provided the environment that, that helped create the relationships um, that I have now in this church. As a young mom, it was like something to be served, like hot coffee. <laughs> I don't know. If, I don't know what more to say about that. But <laughs> that was in the era of like, eating kids' leftovers, peanut butter, and jelly sandwiches. So I was really grateful just to be loved on that way. Um, and, and the final thing I want to say is um, I just appreciate their wisdom. There have been so many um, really pivotal points in Eric and my life where um, we have looked for them, to them for wisdom. Um, and what I love is them together. Um, I love getting wisdom from them together because on one hand you get the, like, think this out and count the cost, and on the other hand you get the, take the risk and jump in, and I'll let you guys figure out which one's which. <laughs> uh, um, but I love that, and, and in their balance, their commitment to one another, and um, their really effort to honor their differences, I feel like that's just such an example to me in my marriage and to us as a body um, to honor the differences and to really do a good job of loving each other. So, thank you. I think I'm on. I'm going to ask Pete and Kathy to come up for this next part, and then Don, you are on deck for the next part. Go ahead and sit on the couch. <laughs> sit down right now. 
I get to present the gift to you guys that the church family have all weighed in on, and I am quite uh, honored by that. I just want to make sure the record reflects I had very little to do with it, but I get all the credit to presenting it to you, and I'm going to make sure I read it correctly. The first thing we did is we asked everybody to take an opportunity to contribute a little something about what they remember about you guys, and we were going to put it together in a book. We received so many entries, we had to go to two volumes. <laughs> Give yourselves a hand. Yeah, it's heavy, <laughs> and, and both metaphorically and physically. <laughs> we also had an opportunity to donate to a, a gift for you guys. So in October, you guys will get to go on an all an all expense paid trip to Turkey and Greece, <laughs> Viking cruise line. <laughs> There'll be some other fun stops along the way, but you're going to get to visit many of the places in the old in the New Testament, and we are delighted to be able to give you that opportunity. So, family, thank you for your generosity and your contribution. <laughs> With that, I will invite up Don. You really, really want him up there? You can go sit down. It's going to be a while. Yeah, it's going to be a while. For the record, um, for the record, if you've ever used the toilet at Pete and Kathy's home, you've used some of the toilet paper. <laughs> Kathy rolled all of it back <laughs> onto all of those rolls. Every single inch of it. Before I say a few things about Pete, um, I do want to, I think we need to take a moment and just express thanks for the strength, dignity, classiness, frugality of Pete Slusher's wife, Kathy Slusher. So give her a hand. It's fun to watch that because the last, <laughs> that this was this was her son Mike. <laughs> okay. Pete Slusher went home to be with the Lord. Oh, nope. <laughs> nope. Sorry. Sorry, I wrote that when I was working with him. <laughs> it, was, it was wishful thinking. <clears throat> Pete, you have been many things in my life. Many, many different things. You were really my first pastor. You were my youth pastor. You spoke at my wedding. You were my first real boss and my first real job. You did my son's wedding. You spoke at my son's funeral. You taught me how to be a pastor. You showed me what family looks like. But most of all, about all these different things, I am so honored to call you my friend. So I wanted to quote Pete Slusher's favorite song from Michael W. Smith. <laughs> this is not funny. <laughs> Pete, a friend's a friend forever. <laughs> if the Lord's the Lord of them, and a friend will not say never, because the welcome will not end. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> Though it's hard to let you go. Well, maybe it is. I don't know. In the Father's hands we know. 
that a lifetime's not too long to live as friends. And it is a privilege to be your friend. A couple of stories um, from my time uh, here at uh, Community Bible Church. I was also privileged to have youth or have Pete as my youth pastor at First Baptist Richland and, and then be here as the youth pastor uh, for Pete's kids, which was terrifying, if you can imagine. <laughs> Not because of Mike and Katie, but just terrifying. So one day, uh, I decided, let's take the youth group skiing up to Mount Ashland. Some of you know this story. It's just another way, really, for me to make fun of Mike, to be honest. <laughs> but it really isn't about Mike, okay? And, and it was like early on in my time, and we went up skiing, had a great day, loaded in the van, we're all done, and we're ready to leave, and Mike's not there. And th that was concerning. And then we go into the lodge and look for Mike, and Mike's not there. And that, again, another level of concern. And then the ski patrol starts heading out to look for Mike, and I am freaking out. I am convinced I will die prematurely because of Mike's slusher. <laughs> I'm convinced of it. And so we are, it is dark. Ski patrol is looking. No word from Mike. And so I get out the cell phone from the bag and assemble it, and I'm going down the mountain, and I call Pete. And I am a wreck, because you don't want to lose any kids. You really don't want to lose the senior pastor's kids. <laughs> and I have no idea what's going on, right? I want to give you the end of the story, and then come back to the phone call. The end of the story is Mike went with some random lady <laughs> into Ashland, had cookies and, co <laughs> and cocoa, and then called his dad and mom after the cookies and cocoa. I'm so damaged from that. <laughs> so I'm talking to Pete. Hey, Pete. I lost your son. I'm crying. I am crying. I am wrecked. And he said, Don, we're going to trust the Lord. <laughs> and I'm thinking... Can you just be ungodly for a moment? <laughs> just, just a moment. He always is anchored in the Word of God, in the truth of Scripture. When things are difficult, he is truly a Peter. He is a rock, but he is not his own rock. He, he relies on a relationship with God. And will always take you there. And that's not going to change tomorrow morning. It's not going to all of a sudden, he's not going to be the same Pete. He's still going to be Pete. It's going to have a different role. But he's going to be that guy who when you're having a hard time and you tell him you're having a hard time, he's going to put his arm around you. He's going to pray with you. And he's going to say, we're going to trust the Lord. This doesn't make sense. We're going to trust the Lord. This is hard. We're going to trust the Lord. That was his boy. And he comforted me. That changed my life. I was in the hospital. Had a really unfortunate condition. I was in a lot of pain. I was a wreck. They were pumping me full of drugs just to shut me up. And it was not working. My pain threshold is really, really low. More drugs, more pain. I'm crying. I seem to cry a lot. <laughs> Annie, I connect with you so much. Right? And it's not as running down my face. I am tears. Susan, is, she is walked out because she is fed up 
with how big of a wimp I am. <laughs> Pete comes in. Pete comes in. Gets down on his knees. Grabs some Kleenex. Wipes my nose. I got a big nose. <laughs> it was a really bad situation. You ever have Pete just meet a felt need? That's amazing. In a world where we don't want to touch each other, where we don't want to get our hands dirty, where we don't get to get on our knees and serve one another, oh, what this world would be like if we served one another, if we woke up in the morning and said, that person has a need, they're not my enemy. They're made in the image and likeness of God. How can I love them even with snot coming out their nose? So gag, put some gloves on, and wipe people's tears from their eyes. Because that's what Christ has called us to do. And that's what you've done so well. In every good war movie, there's that sergeant, right? This is just not a war movie without that sergeant with a, a cigar kind of just chewing on it at this point, and his uniform is dirtier than everybody else's, and everybody's freaking out, and shells are going off all around, and that sergeant says, you and I are going to take that hill. I know you're scared. I know it's hard. But just having that sergeant there fills you with confidence. That's what Pete has done, I think, for so many of us so many times in our life. And that's what he did for me and my family. In 2020, in the ICU in Arizona, when my boy was in a coma, he was there, putting his arm around me, leading us in prayer, grabbing me and saying, we're going to get through it. We're going to get through it. Because that's what we do. We're not on this planet for any other reason as Christians, but to love each other, to serve each other, and to love others that don't know Jesus and to serve them. Many of you in this room have had that drill sergeant put his arm around you and give you confidence that you didn't have. And I just want to thank you, Pete, for doing that in my life and so many other lives. A couple of verses that I, I thought of when I, when I thought of Pete. In, in Hebrews 10, 24, and let us consider how to stir up. Some of the versions say, uh, spur on. Let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works. And there, there's very little stagnant water around Pete Slusher. He's not going to let you just sit there and wallow and just where you're at. He's going to push you and encourage you and, and pull you. And I love that about you. I love that about you. Isaiah 40, verse 8. The grass withers, the flower fades. But the word of our God will stand forever. Pete, you preached and taught God's word so faithfully. And you lived it out so faithfully. So thank you. 2 Timothy 4, 1 and 2. I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, Paul writes to young Timothy, who is to judge the living and the dead and by his appearing and his kingdom Preach the word. Good job. Be ready in season and out of season. Check. Repu reprove. Holy cow. <laughs> Why does it have to be in there? Did you have to take that one so literally? <laughs> How many times? Right? That finger. That large finger in my face. Sorry, sorry. That was a therapy moment for me. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Reprove, rebuke, and exhort with complete patience and teaching. Thank you for teaching the Word. 
Thank you for living the word. Yeah, we can clap now. Good time. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close this in prayer. Um, so let's pray. Father God, we love you. We love you so much. Thank you so much for loving us. For giving us your son, Jesus Christ, as that perfect sacrifice. We are, we are so grateful. And then God, you have raised up servants in your church over the years to, to teach your word, to, to love, to be an example, to shepherd us. And Father God, we see Pete and Kathy as, as two of the finest. And we are so grateful. And God, I know tomorrow morning a new season in their lives begins. And God, I pray that they would look back at this season and, and the many before it and they would be grateful and thankful and humbled and they would celebrate. But God, they are still here. This is not their funeral. And so, Father, you have more work for them to do. And, and so for the community and for the church and for Pete and Kathy, as, as, as they move forward, God, would you just give clarity, give opportunity uh, for them to use their gifts in, in wonderful new ways that they can't even see right now. God, I thank you for Community Bible Church. God, I know that the, the 13 years here were some of the best years of my life and my family's life. And, and, and Father, it, they didn't only have a good pastor the last 27 years, but they're a really good church. It's a, it's a, it is a privilege to be a part of this body of believers. It is a privilege to call this group of people family. And so, Father God, I, I, I pray, I, I guess just a prayer of committing Pete and Pat, Kathy, and, and, and however many years you have them here still on the planet, that they would faithfully continue to serve you, that they would find joy in continuing to serve their family. God, we love you, and, and we recognize tonight, and, and we mark it as a special time. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, and you are dismissed. Thank you so much for coming.